<laughs> Thanks, <All right>. Vincenzo. <laughs> <laughs> this meeting is being recorded. Order is 7.20 p.m. for those in attendance in accordance with the open meeting law. The board states for the record that this meeting is being recorded by Norc. The host would like you to unmute your microphone. It's being recorded you can press by star six. It's being recorded by the town via Zoom recording, and it may be recorded by you are unmuted. other local media. So please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So first, I'd like to welcome our new clerk, Mrs. Jennifer McNeil. Thank you for coming on board and joining us. We'll try to keep the meetings early, you know, adjourn early for early you, time. even though our first meeting, we're with you, we're already starting late. So welcome. And we're going to start with uh, public comment. Is anyone here that would like to speak during co public comment or anyone that's in attendance? via Zoom. I'm going to rely on you, Mr. Gilberto. I'm not seeing All set? Nope. All set? Okay, great. So it's 721, where our next order of business is the public hearing <coughs> on One Stop Liquors, 265 Main Street, alteration of premises. Is there a notice in the... There is. Do you have the, I've got it, never mind. Page nine, we'll just quickly read the notice of hearing. Um, notice of public hearing in accordance with chapter 138 of the Massachusetts General Laws, an in-person and virtual public hearing will be held by the select board on Monday, July 12, 2021, in room 14, Town Hall 235 North Street, North Reading, Massachusetts, and via virtual technology at 7.15 p.m. On the application of One Stop Liquors, Inc., for an alteration of premises for the retail packaged goods store, all alcohol license exercised at 265, also known as 265 to 277 Main Street, Suite 2, North Reading, Massachusetts, in a one floor front store, cold chest and back room for storage. Premises proposed to increase by approximately 6,563 square feet to 13,595 square feet. The public hearing notice includes the internet access and the telephone access for the virtual meeting by the select board, North Reading Select Board 624-2021. So for, as we open the meeting, if you are here on behalf of the <coughs> applicant, if you will come forward. <coughs> There's microphones over on that table, so you The little um, black microphones over there with the green button on them. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairperson. Welcome. If you could please state your names for the record. Exactly. Mr. Gilberto, did um, I... I'm Paul Alf, and I'm counsel for the applicant. This is Manny Silva. He's the manager of the package store um, at, at Atlantic Plaza. I have the... Uh, Excuse me, one. I'm s I mean, don't mean to interrupt you, but Mr. Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just would ask that uh, everybody in attendance, including the applicant, you could just speak as if you're speaking to that speakerphone in the middle there, um, just so that we can collect all the sound and get it back out through Zoom. Um, it worked pretty well last time. We do have some additional microphones that are on order, but they just were not able to be delivered in time for today. So for the tonight's meeting, we really need folks to project at that speakerphone if they could. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Gilberto. <laughs> we, uh, we submitted to the board uh, a package of materials as required by the ABCC regulations. We sent the notices out by certified mail to all the abutters. I have the green cards and I can leave those with whomever is responsible, okay. Uh, the purpose of the application is to enlarge the existing store, um, as it stated in the public hearing, to a facility with 13,595 square feet. 
Uh, our clients have found in the operation of this <coughs> store and another store is that providing a wider, wider variety of product um, provides a better customer experience as well as providing them an opportunity to compete with some of the big boys out there. I'm sure you're familiar with the, uh, some of the warehouse stores and uh, to keep the business local and to take care of the local uh, customer. Uh, they've had other experiences in some of their other stores where making the store uh, bigger uh, makes the uh, customer uh, more inclined to keep their business local. And that's pretty much it. We're here to answer any questions that you may have. I think you'll find <coughs> that the application contained all the necessary documentation, uh, but uh, please let us know if you have any additional questions for us. Sure. To, to my colleagues, does anyone have any questions? I don't have any questions, just a comment. I'm, I'm glad you're so successful and you're able to expand and stay in town. I think it's, it's a good thing. Any other questions? I do have some from the chair, if you don't have any. So how much time do you spend um, at the premises every week? Myself, I would say about speak, speak, uh, oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> uh, I would say about 60 hours a week. And in terms of the expansion, it seems like a rather large expansion. Are you going to be increasing the number of employees that are there, being able to take care of the store while after it's completed? Well, we would have to expand that employment also. <clears throat> How many additional employees do you expect to hire? Uh, I mean, business will, will tell us how many we need as we go forward. Um, we have, you know, 12 employees right now there. So we'll take on as many as we need. As many are as available out there for us. And anything else, oh, Mr. Strudo? I, I will make a comment. I do agree with the characterization that Fortunately or unfortunately, bigger is better. And uh, I think you do need it to compete because I do see that, you know, I, um, I entertain so much, I find myself in these type of stores a little, you know, a little too much sometimes. But the truth is that you do see a lot more flow in the larger store versus the local kind of convenient liquor store that just, you know, whether it's pricing power or whatever. So I think that, you know, I, uh, I'm just happy that they didn't, that the, that the space was available so you didn't have to relocate out because that would have been, you know, the worst. So I just, again, I, without any studies that they have, I, I can, you know, just concur based on what I see in other communities. So you know, thank you for trying. We'll do our best. Mr. Gilberto, any other issues or comment? Uh, Madam Chair, through you, it looks like you're going into the former uh, Weight Watchers um, location. Um, is there a second location you're going into as well, or is it just that the location? The former Rite Aid location also. Okay, so further south on the plaza. Next two. Yeah. Next two days. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. If there's nothing further, just in terms of a reminder, we did change our policy to require new employees to be tips, tips trained, and uh, one of the ma ma major issues that the town and the <coughs> board and the and our enforcement officials focus on is ensuring that um, there's a manager present there, you know, to, to mind the store, but also to manage the staff and make sure the staff is trained to know, you know, what's the right kind of IDs and what's the wrong kind of IDs and to make sure there's no sales that, you know, shouldn't occur there, sales to minors. That's, that's embedded into our employees on a daily basis. Great. We appreciate that. Okay. Madam Chair, what's the uh, timeline associated with your build out and is it going to be interrupting your services well, we, for we a while? We expect to interrupt as minimal as possible. Uh, product and supplies for remodeling have issues on delays. We're hoping to be done within a six month period, but if all goes well, okay. that's tough to say. Sometimes we supply it. Uh, flooring, shelving has been an issue with some of our other locations that we remodeled recently. So it's just a, as soon as we can, we want to be up and running, trust me. Okay, this is good I'd just like to say that I'm pleased you've never been before us for any other issue, and I hope that you are never are, and I wish you all the best of luck. No, I'd like to see you guys in the establishment. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs>
I, 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 I have been in the establishment a number of times, <laughs> at different hours of the day too, and I've pretty much seen him there. So I mean, I know that he is a presence uh, on the in lo on location. So that's a good thing. All right. So if there's no other comments or questions from my colleagues, I'll open up the portion of the hearing to um, uh, solicit comment, either in favor or against the application. Is there anyone here that wishes to speak in favor of or against the application? Mr. Gilbert, are we good with the Zoom attendees? <coughs> All set? Yeah, yes. Okay. Hearing none, we'll close that portion of the hearing. And do we have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to approve an alteration of premises for the retail package goods store all alcohol beverage license for One Stop Liquors, Inc., 265 Main Street, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Good Aye. luck Aye. with it. Thank you very okay. much. Thanks. Best of luck. What are we seeing you next? <laughs> okay. Are they open? Our next order of business is the public hearing on Joe's Quick Marks Mass LLC doing business as Speedway transfer of package store wine and malt beverage license. And I'll just quickly read the um, notice of public hearing. Do I read it? Oh, thank you. Um, Do I read page, that one? Page before, okay. Matt, page, page, page nine. Nine. Okay. In accordance with Chapter 138 of the Massachusetts General Laws, an in-person and virtual public healing, hearing, healing, hearing will be held by the Select Board on Monday, July 12, 2021, in Room 14, Town Hall, 235 North Street, North Reading, Massachusetts, and via virtual technology at 7.30 p.m. on the application of Joe's Quick Marts, Mass LLC doing business as Speedway for a transfer of license of the retail package goods store malt wines beverage license exercised at 231 Main Street, North Reading, Massachusetts, a 2,400 square foot convenience store constructed of split block and aluminum glass storefront. The hearing publication contains the uh, internet and telephone access to this hearing virtually, and this is posted by the select board on July 1st, 2021. So if you could just state your names for the record. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Members of the board, my name is Adam Barnasi. I'm attorney for the applicant with me is Tyler Trendy, the proposed manager of record. Um, I, I can tell you after 15 months of uh, being remote for these sorts of hearings, this is my first one that I've been to in person, so it's nice to be here and to see you here. So, um, nice to see you in full suit, too, yeah. as opposed to just, you know, from the right. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, we we right. Yeah. right, right. No, it's a change. We're missing those shorts, though. <laughs> uh, so with that being said, uh, this is an application for a transfer of the Section 15 Mall Beverage License. Uh, in, in conjunction with the purchase of the Speedway uh, located over at 231 Main Street. Um, for the record, the site's located on the eastern side of Route 28, just south of North Street. It's currently operated as a Speedway. It'll continue to be operated as a Speedway uh, under new management and ownership. So the licensee is, uh, is wholly owned by Cross America and GP LLC, which is a general partner of Cross America Partners LP. Uh, it's a publicly traded company. Cross American Partners is a fuel distributor and operator of over 1,100 stores in 34 states across the United States. Uh, the company is in the process of purchasing 106 stores in eight states, They're buying nine locations in Massachusetts, and the North Reading location is the only one within the state that has an alcohol beverage license to it. Uh, Tyler Trendy is the proposed interim manager of record. He's TIP certified, he's a territory manager of Cross America and manager of the LLC. Uh, he's a mass resident, United States citizen, he's about the age of, of 21 and meets the qualifications for manager of record under 138 section 26. Um, just to, as a matter of clarification, I mentioned that, that Tyler is the interim manager. So what, what he, what's happening right now is, is the 
the closings on the transactional closings on these various various um, stores are all happening kind of at the same time. So we put this application through. Tyler is a territory manager. He's going to be overseeing the purchase of this location and the staffing of this location. So what I anticipate happening is this application is before this board. Um, in the event that it's approved by this board, we'll go to the ABCC and probably have about a month until it's approved. I would expect that we'll have, by that time, another application before this board for a change of manager for a permanent manager of record. Uh, there's a good chance that manager of record might be the current manager of record. As you can imagine, when, when there's tra transactions happening like this, there are some staffing issues where you're trying to figure out who's staying on board, who's being retained. So uh, we do recognize that the manager of record, as with most uh, municipalities, is very important. Across America understands that uh, in this location in particular, that uh, historically it's, it's moving forward, let's put it that way, it's important that you know who the manager of record is, there's communication, if there's ever a, a change in personnel prior to an application being filed, that you notify the board and let you know what's going on with it. Um, I know that the company is really excited to come here uh, and, and open a store locally. Um, and with that, happy to answer any questions the board may have. Right. Oh, do do the members, Mr. Studo. So does um does it all stay the same? Meaning the the type of store? Just a curiosity. Or is there is there or does your company does the LLC just look at it like different like you know the interior like product wise and you know so is it does it have like a unique feature for the convenience store that's different from what you know Speedway has it right now? Well, it's my understanding. I mean, Tyler might be able to speak more to this. It's my understanding that at the, at the beginning. Uh, <laughs> It will be run very similarly operationally to what it is right now. It's going to be. It will be run as a speedway. I think they'll probably do some general cosmetic improvements, some uh, you know, inventory improvements, and things like that. But it will remain very much a functional um, gas station with with a, a convenience component to it. That is correct. Okay. All right. So that's that's kind of like how the business model is. It's not something where the convenience store. Or maybe even again, like that something's like dramatically different where it's like a, okay, so that was the question, just because I know that it's literally, no pun intended, very convenient, you know, for, for many. So you just don't like to uh, lose anything like that around here, especially since we don't exactly have like, you know, people just lining up for them. So, sure. Thank you. Could you explain to me um, how this? change of managership is going to, are you going to be there every day until, like you said, that the current manager now may become, still stay the manager, or you'll hire a new manager? What I think is going to happen is there, from, we, we had a discussion about this earlier with, with the team, and it sounds like the, the new manager will be, will be brought on board and an application will come before this board. Most likely, at least the application will be submitted potentially heard before this board before the ABC signs off on it. So you'll have somebody that's known locally that will be there overseeing the sale of alcoholic beverages. It's my understanding that, that Tyler is going to oversee the opening of the store and the hiring of personnel and things like that, but he won't be sitting there 40 hours a week working behind the register. So we want to be very straightforward about that coming before you. Thank you. On this paperwork, Tyler is the proposed manager. Right, right, and that, and so that that that's where there's a little bit of a nuance here because it, it was you know a chicken or the egg. So we put the application first to be in line with with the the rest of the transaction so that we can have the alpha beverage license and the transaction close um, at the same time as we're working on which employees are going to be retained. If this was if this was a stand if this was a standalone transaction, I think it would be a lot more straightforward. But because there's other moving parts involved, I think the idea was there was going to be some overlap between the approval of the license transfer and then the hiring and local approval at least of the permanent manager of record. I don't know if that answers your question. So I guess my concern is, is there going to be a manager there on a daily basis overseeing the alcohol? Absolutely. 100% yes. One, I mean, by the time the license is approved and activated, there will absolutely always be a manager of record approved by this board on site 40 plus hours. 
Are you all set, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Gonzalez? Any other questions of the board? Yeah. Just, just in the interim, you know, the next 30 days or so, um, your physical presence, Tyler, is going to, first of all, where do you live and how long? I in Woburn. Okay. Uh, I always kind of tweak how I say it because I'm not new, but uh, <laughs> I live in Woburn, Woburn, so not far. I think it took me 11 minutes to get here. Yeah, that's not uh, What do you say? Woburn? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Woburn, Woburn, Woburn. <laughs> Woburn. Not Woburn. <laughs> not Woburn. <laughs> yeah. Never say Woburn. Never say Woburn. Uh, okay, so, so again, <laughs> so for this cusp period, I understand this is sort yeah. of a temporary, um, get over the hub, cusp period. Um, are you anticipating spending a significant amount of time at this location? I do not anticipate that. <clears throat> you do not. So who's going to be managing mm. for the next 30 days? And how much guidance and oversight is there going to be from you as a uh, manager of record? Well, I, I, if, I, if, I, if I can interject a little bit. So be, because this is being approved locally, they're not, the, the, the company's not going to be taking over until uh, after this is approved I by the agency. There will be nobody on site there. So that's what, so if, let's assume that there's a 30 day lag between this board approving the ABCC. That's really when the ramp up to closing is going to be happening, the retention of employees, and potentially the hiring of the permanent manager of records is going to happen. I think the most ideal situation would be if this is approved. Within the next two weeks, we will be filing with this board the permanent manager of records. So this board will have that paperwork prior to the license coming back. And actually, and, and actually transferring over. Right, right. Get you. So there okay. will be nobody there, you know, as far as the, until the issuance of the license happens. So I think that this board would be, uh, you know, comfortable. I mean, yeah, certainly I, if I could make any suggestion, it might be to make the, the license conditional upon the uh, submittal of the permanent manager of record. potentially. Maybe that would provide some comfort to or knowing that you're going to have somebody that will be before you, you know, prior to the license being activated. That's one potential consideration. Okay. Any other questions, Mr. Schiller? No, I, I'm not. No, it, the timeline now seems to make more sense. I understand. So, no, I'm actually fairly comfortable with, with what's being proposed. Yeah, thank no. you. That was a clarification I wanted mm -hmm. to. Just, does does anyone intro. else have any questions? Thank you. Just from the chair then. So you're not planning to be there, even though you're the manager that's being proposed to the board on the application. I'm sorry? You're not planning to be there, even though you're the manager proposed on the application for the North Reading Board. Right, I, I, I won't be the manager on site working. Okay, but who is the manager now? We have an approved manager of record. What's the interaction or what's the business relationship with the manager of record. There is none, that manager's gone? Uh, well, that, that man, the, the current manager of record is employed by the current owner of that company, right. um, Speedway MA LLC. Right. So that manager of record might very well be the new manager of record. But there's no relationship currently between Speedway MA LLC and Joe Sprickmarts MA LLC other than one is selling assets to another company. So there's no relationship there, and there won't be until the transaction closes, which will happen once the license is approved by the state. Okay, so I guess I probably asked that wrong. So that manager has to stay in place until the transaction's approved, and you, you have a manager approved that's going to be there. So I guess probably my question is, is the, then the current manager is going to remain the current manager at the premises until your transaction is all squared away. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. I mean, that, that, that would be a question for, for, the, for that license that's okay. operating there, but presumably so. I mean, they're, they're, you know, part of their obligations on the agreement is to operate in, in the ordinary course. So, yeah, they, okay. that, that manager is, will, will remain there. It's not like after approval here there will be nobody on site um, overseeing the sale of Right. Well, just because it's approved here doesn't mean it's it has to go to the ABCC, as you know. So you can't, you know, I think we need to have someone who's responsible there. Uh, and it, I don't know what experience you have. I saw that you're tips trained, Tyler, but I don't know what experience you have in the sale of alcohol. Could you just let us know what that experience is? Uh, well, I don't have any retail experience in the sale of alcohol, but I do have part of my job responsibilities now is to, uh, for, back, for lack of a better word, consult 
tenants that own retail stores and you know make sure that the employees are safe and they're acting in a safe manner regarding the sale of alcohol. This is the first time I've ever been formally certified, you know, tips trained. Um, but you know, I've been with the company for five years and that's always been part of the job responsibility is making sure that these tenants are acting on you know, behalf of doing ethical good business and being safe and complying with local and, and federal regulations regarding the sale of anything. Okay, so I guess when I said what's the relationship I'm in, what's your, what's the understanding? So the board knows what the understanding is until your transaction goes through the current manager that the board has in place until this is finally approved is going to stay there because that's a person who's familiar with the sale of alcohol, off-premises alcohol. That's correct. And just to clarify. We, who, who is that? I, I did, uh, I guess. I, 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 have their, I have their name, but I don't uh, I don't have it in my notes here. But ju just, just to clarify, the, uh, the applicant that's before you tonight will have no relationship at all with the, the current operation from today until the ABCC approved. So we will have oh, no, yeah, okay. there will be no, no you know. The, okay. So you've already acquired the, you've no, already. No, no, we have not, the, the, the applicant has not acquired the business. And, and, and we won't have any dealings uh, with the site until the transaction closes, which won't be until the ABCC approves this application. So presumably, okay. I see. you know, 30 days after it's uh, approved by this board. Okay. So tomorrow the operation will continue to be with the current license. Okay. okay. So, so bottom line, you're looking to hire yourself out of a job here. You're hiring <laughs> someone to take your position should you, the board, right. act favorably. Right. Right. Got it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that if, let's say, enforcement officials went in there, they're going to expect to see the, the current manager until such time as we're replacing that person with a new proposed manager. That's correct. Okay. I understand. All right. <laughs> Makes sense. Okay. Is there anything else, Mr. Gilberto, that you had question or comment on with respect to the application? Yes, Madam Chair. Through you, in addition to the questions with regard to the management which you've addressed this evening, um, we received some, some uh, indication that this is a transaction being financed between the parties and that there isn't any sort of a loan in, involved with it. But um, could you just comment on that in terms of the, the sale? It's about a $1.5 million transaction cost. How is it being fi funded? Uh, it's being funded through, uh, through Cross American Partners. So Cross American Partners is the ultimate owner of this LLC. It's a public trading company. Uh, we were asked that to provide uh, today to provide um, financial statements backing that up. But it's going to be a, a, a cash transaction. So, okay. so we can certainly provide that. Okay, I think that would be helpful for us, you know, just because we we saw that there was a utility bill that apparently intended to reflect Mr. Trendy's um, residency, yes. but that we didn't see a bank statement okay. or any sort sure. of indication that the funds were on hand. Absolutely. Um, so if you could provide that, that would be that would be great. And to the board members, through you, Madam Chair, what we would do is hold the filing being submitted to the ABCC until we receive that, and upon receipt of statements indicating the balance of 1.5 whatever million dollars we would then release it to the ABCC so any vote that we would take would be <coughs> contingent upon the applicants producing the required financial documentation to demonstrate the demonstrate the source of funding for the transaction that that, that is my recommendation and just uh, yes. madam chair through you, you the board members are aware I was not in the office last week so I didn't notice that that was not in the packet until today so we did communicate that late today um, and we expect full compliance, but I'm sure if we communicated, it, we, could, it would have, we would have been provided it sooner. And this is 107, 207 pages of our packet. And I just yes. assumed it was somewhere in there. Because it is a requirement. They would kick it back to us anyway. The ABCC okay. would mm -hmm. kick it back and not approve it anyway. Unless you you generally just the three months? Yes. We, we usually provide, provide bank statements over a, a three month period, um, indicating the balance of on, on hand. Are there any other comments or questions from the board? Anything else from you, Mr. Gilberto? No, ma'am. Okay, so um, I'm going to open the portion of the public hearing up to anyone in attendance who wishes to speak in favor of or against the application. Is there anyone that wishes to speak in favor 
of or against the application. Madam Chair, I'm not seeing any on Zoom. Hearing none, we'll close that portion of the hearing. And do I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to approve the transfer of license to Joe's Quick Marts MA LLC DBA Speedway of Massachusetts LLC 231 Main Street, contingent upon asset confirmation. Contingent upon the applicant's production of the requisite financial documentation um, demonstrating the source of funding for the financing of the transaction, which I think you said are bank records. Okay. Did, right? we, did we get all that? I, I, yes. I, I used the Cliff Notes version. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer White, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I, can, yes. tell by okay, the, I can tell by the way you're looking at me that you wanted me to repeat the contingent portion of it. So. No, what she said. <laughs> yeah, I'll second. It's the motion okay. by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Congratulations. Thanks. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Know the rules. I'm happy to know that your tips are. Oh, no. Yes. I have a regular. <laughs> great. <coughs> touch me, please. Thank you. Okay. Our next order of business is to review the fiscal year 2020 audit. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Madam Chair, thank, yeah, thank you. Through you, that, that was our intended next uh, scheduled item. We were uh, informed by the auditor uh, late on Thursday after the agenda was um, posted that uh, the audit would not be completed. So we are anticipating reviewing the audit for fiscal year 2020 at the August 16th meeting. Okay, thank you. Mr. I, like that. I don't think anyone has any questions with that. The next order of business is to discuss the fall annual October town meeting. There may be a vote to delay that. Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, thank you. Um, as the members may have seen in the packet, we had provided um, a copy of correspondence both with town council and with bond council regarding the town meeting. Uh, the reason being that we we're looking to um, postpone um, or move the date from um, our October 2nd, which was a Saturday morning that outdoors that we initially contemplated back in March when we set the date, to the customary uh, indoor um, town meeting um, on Monday evening, October 4th. We have been advised, uh, rather than having a vote now uh, to delay, to um, have a hearing, um, public hearing, consistent with our practice for setting the initial date and so the board is being advised to vote to schedule a hearing at its next regular meeting on August 16th, at which we could take any testimony and ultimately vote to set the new, here, the new town meeting date. Uh, so we've prepared a, a motion um, in there um, for the board's consideration. We proposed that the hearing be held that evening at 7.30 p.m., However, I, I'm re recalling that we talked when we talked about scheduling that meeting, there may be an issue with an early start time. I'm thinking for executive session. That, do, am I recalling correctly that it might be hard for members to get here at 6 o'clock on that particular night? I thought, and, uh, Mrs. Gonzalez, I'm thinking it might have been you that, that identified that. But um, it was, is that a Thursday? It, it's a Monday. It's a Monday. Monday, yeah, Monday it's the 16th. It's okay with me. I can adapt, I can adapt okay. to that. We would contemplate a 6 p.m. executive session with a 7 p.m. regular session, as has been the custom. But I just, I thought there was a date that there was a, a challenge with the time. It may have been the September meeting, though. Do you want me to change it to 7? Are you taught? I'm sorry. October 16th? August 16th. The, the date for the hearing. For the public hearing. For the hearing. Oh, yes. oh wait. I thought you were oh, talking about I thought you were talking about the meeting. No, I, yeah, I'm no. sorry. Me too. This, this is just the, for the, the hearing to this change. This is the August date. 16th. August 16th. Monday, oh. August 16th. And I recall that when we okay. set that date as the August meeting date, there may have been a member who could not be here early, earlier than 7. I, I remember that coming up, Madam Chair. I just, I'm not sure who it was. That was me. It was, okay. Yes. So if we're going to start at 7 o'clock, my suggestion would be to um, have the hearing at 8.15 p.m. So we would start an executive session at 7 o'clock and go to open session at approximately 8 o'clock with an 8.15 hearing. So Mr. Studo, the motion says 7.30, but if that would work better, it would be 8.15. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I did remember. Does that work for yeah, everybody? Was 
so the no executive session that Th there would be but it would start at seven at seven yes not at six okay would that work for you madam chair yes okay we Madam Chair, I move to hold a public hearing on Monday, August. Sorry, is I not supposed to do this yet? Do we keep going? Good. Yes, sure. Okay, <laughs> Madam Chair, I move to hold a public hearing on Monday, August 16, 2021, at 8:15 p.m. to consider delaying October town meeting to a new date. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo. Second by Mr. O'Leary. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Union. Was there anything else on that agenda item, Mr. Gilberto, or are we good to I will only remind the board members, um, departments, boards, and committees, uh, and the public that the deadline for submitting warrant articles for that town meeting is the same day as the hearing, Monday, August 16th at 4 o'clock p.m. Okay. Now, our next order of business is the review of uh, town on land update <coughs> and that is a schedule in the packet or what page was that? Page, seven, page 16 or 17? 17, 18, no, oh, 16, 17, 17 changed. Okay. So that we can follow along and Mr. Gilberto. Thank you Madam Chair. Um, please note that the packet, if you're pulling it up electronically, it was uh, revised and the only revision on those two pages is actually the second page of the spreadsheet to um, add a property at three Carpenter Drive that has come up before the board. Um, it was not on the list um, of, of parcels um, that were pending. So we, we've framed this for more of a general discussion with regard to the, the, the outstanding issues. Um, there are many parcels and I'm, I'm doing my best to keep the details straight on all of them. Um, I know Mr. Magazoo has an interest in um, at least one of the parcels um, and so I know I see him here this evening. Um, I guess the first thing that I, I wanted to affirm with the board is that it continues to be our desire to proceed with selling uh, these parcels and I think that the board members are all aware that um, we have um, believe we have obtained safe harbor with regard to 40B applications um, as a result of the uh, portion of um, land that is being used for affordable housing and um, that is something that for the current pending safe harbor case regarding 20 Elm Street it's a fixed amount at a point in time going back to I believe July or August of 2019 so um, anything that we do with regard to these properties does not affect that okay. particular um, item it could affect something in the future if an application comes in and so I, I really want to make sure that the board members are aware of that possibility um, you know, we believe our percentage under glam is approximately 1.54 percent so four hundredths of a percent above the threshold at 1.5 percent um, with it being very close mm -hmm. and um, I, I'm not I'm not here to recommend against selling the property but I, I am here to, to certainly caution that if we receive another application and and have eroded that percentage um, it, it could be, you know, a, a challenge, and we, you know, we do believe that one of the things that will be disputed in front of the Housing Appeals Committee is what the total percentage is and what the total acreage is. Um, we had two parcels that um, that we did sell in in November of 2020. While this is all pending, um, those were two parcels where we had directed the property owners to obtain. Uh, a professional engineer, a land surveyor, to draw up a plan and then uh, indicate the amount they were going to seek to purchase, and we sold only that amount to them. Um, so we sort of distinguished those separately from these others. Um, many of these have been voted on already by the select board. And full disclosure, Mr. Magazine is aware he's been at many of the meetings, um, you know, authorizing the sale, although there was a bit of a, a hiccup in February of 2020. Um, it was not COVID related, but it was actually internet outage related. Um, board members may remember we had to cancel a meeting because our internet service was out and our website was down for more than, I think it's a 24 hour period um, prior to the meeting. It actually may be less than that. 
so um, we had a meeting where we were kind of planning to take things up and that meeting was required to be canceled and then I don't think we ever got back to it and the world sort of fell apart unfortunately so those have been left hanging um, um, the parcels um, uh, there were a number of them that were taken up at that point in time but I guess my, my first you know to sort of move things along is is are we, are we still inclined to you know to proceed with the, the sale of these parcels you know and and if we are I can try to give sort of a quick summary on the, the many of them that are that are pending and what needs to be done and do you have um, I, I just want to ask you do you have the the lots I think you showed us as we were cons contemplating some of these mm -hmm. where we took votes I, you showed us the GIS, the mapping, because mm -hmm. I, I do recall one of them was located behind a number of homes. Yes. So the only access way to get there was through a private parcel and then behind the private parcels. So I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't planning to go through the, the detail of each parcel this evening because there's so much in, involved with it, but I can. I can put mm -hmm. up the, the GIS map. Um, on it, if that's what uh, what the board well, members like. I think it's like. important because I I think I don't know if everybody was here during most of these, so I think it would just help to visualize it because I I don't remember these go way back. Sure. Let's see if I. And I th I know you noted that what what the vote had been taken and when mm -hmm. on 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 some of these, um, but I know some of them we did table because of issues like that. Yes. I think one of these, it might be, it might be on um, 8 Audubon, I can't remember, but it would help us just to refresh our memories, because I didn't have a chance to go look at the map for all of these previously. So I will share my screen. And then I will I'm gonna enlarge the screen up there so we can see it. There are a number of these, so I, I can just take them in order if sure. that's what folks want to do. I'll start with five Audubon. Can I just ask one preliminary question before we do? Yes, Mr. Walner. I'm, I'm kind of stuck on the point five oh four. <laughs> if we were to do all these, do we just go, fall, you know, would we technically fall below the point five oh four that you mentioned? Um, Not that we're going to do all these, but like, just can you? Can you I, I, I don't. I don't think that we will. But my, my concern is that that 1.54 will be challenged, and every square footage that can be removed from that will be sought to be removed. So we're at a number, but I don't. You know, there will be certainly quite a bit of work that will go on at a hearing with regard to whether that number is the number or not. So I guess at the outset, I think then maybe we let, maybe I could just pull the members to see if they're even interested in entertaining this at this present moment of time, if that's going to actually impact the uh, the current matter, even if it's a, you know theoretical impact. It, it will not, Madam Chair, it will not impact the current case from my conversations with town council. Um, my my apprehension is a, a future application that comes in. Mm -hmm. sure. So, Madam Chair, if I can, and I'd like to piggyback on what Mr. Walner said. I, I was going to say it before we had gotten into this, but I think that because it seems we have a good idea where the challenge is going to come from existing and maybe after, I, I just think right now the risk, I mean, I, I think we talked about this when I first got on the board last year where the risk of you know contemplating any sale even though we want to long term I mean the it's razor thin margin and the worst thing in the world is to find out that like we lose a challenge for something really big that the community's been pretty 
lockstep in that they don't want and it's because we inadvertently you know sold off some land because that would that would be terrible so that's uh, yeah i think that for me if you're going to poll like i think that this exercise like i it it's going to take a lot to convince me that we should pull the trigger on all of these right now with all those pending items okay. mr um Wong, are you What's your thought on that? Well, I'm just, I mean, some of these have already been voted on and approved, so that's the other part of it is that I'm trying to be respectful of the people who went through the process and they're waiting. So there's just, you know, there's a part of me that's like 1,500 square feet. I, I don't know if that pushes a dial or not, you know. Um, I'm kind of just trying to balance out, like, are we, are we going to put ourselves in harm's way by going too far in this? But on the other hand, I want to be respectful of the people who have already gone through the process and, you know, can we take care of those without causing a kerfuffle? But I don't understand the scope of the numbers, you know, so I just don't understand. Mm. Mrs. Gonzalez, what's your thought on it? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a little unnerving to think that, like Mr. Studo said, that, you know, we could inadvertently really hurt ourselves by doing that. Um, how many of these are approved already? Uh, many of them. Many you, of them. Through you, Madam Chair, they, many of them have been been voted on um, in response to the request that came in. Um, many uh, voted in February of 2020. A few in, um, I, I think, late 2019, if my memory serves me correctly. Um, there are a few that are new. Um, there were some where there was a, I think, and I'm looking at Megan, Mr. Megan, there was a condition that I think you wanted removed from the vote that I don't think we've quite removed from from the approval no, yet. That, that got moved and then when you came back to me you wanted me to add the parcel on the other side of me. Mm -hmm. So that's why I went another meeting to add that other parcel. Mm -hmm. And I agreed to it. That pushed me a month later and by that time COVID came. Well, I think as I don't know, we haven't heard from you Mr. earlier. What's your thought on proceeding or or staying staying proceeding for the moment? Well, first of all, when it comes to GLAM, uh, I don't think that our community should be hiding behind GLAM, nor will we ever anticipating hiding behind um, GLAM to um, thwart a 40B application. You know, I think the, the merits of the proposals should sink or swim on their own regardless of, of GLAM. Uh, GLAM just happened to uh, fortunately fall in our lap. and provide us with some uh, safe harbor uh, for an application that's now being considered. Uh, that being said, to the point that was made uh, earlier, you know, most of these applicants had already gone through the process and if not for some technical difficulties and then COVID, uh, we would have acted favorably, and actually we did act favorably on probably 80% of these already. Um, so again, in fairness, I think it's. Uh, I think we should move forward. I'm in favor of moving forward. Um, in relation to, to the GLAM, I'm not overly concerned about that. Uh, and again, if that's the only shield that we have, we have a bigger problem than I anticipate we do in relation to affordable housing. So um, we've had a tremendous success rate uh, over the years in negotiating with 40B applicants um, and coming to reasonable conclusions and agreements with, I think, all but one applicant over the 30 years that I've been hanging around here. Um, and that's, a, that's always been a testament to, uh, to the town of North Reading and our willingness to uh, entertain the applications and be fair about it and also force them to the table. Uh, whereas the town of North Reading was always used as an example uh, by the state as to how to handle these applications. So we've done a very good job over the years by engaging the neighborhoods and getting them involved in the process and uh, ensuring that uh, whatever is going to be built uh, meets everybody's satisfaction and helps to assist in meeting our responsibilities of having 10% affordable uh, units, which we now are below. Um, so again, uh, to me, we've already taken action, I think in fairness to the uh, the petitioners, uh, we should follow through, and the administration uh, should have followed through on it earlier. And um, so I'm, in, I'm in favor of moving forward. I'm not overly concerned about it. Um, from the chair, I think um, I, I'm in agreement with Mr. Studo that 
you know, if you know, if, if there's a razor thin margin because we're selling off a parcel here and a parcel here, it all adds up. And I'm not one in favor of selling. I'm not one in favor of selling vacant land anyway. What was compelling to me with some of these was it was, you know, a part of someone's driveway already. It was a sliver of land that the town was never interested in using or the conditions that were imposed upon it. Most of these have the same conditions imposed upon them. Um, that it's not to be used as a buildable lot or impacting other you know, neighbors in the vicinity. I don't know that that's the case with all of these that we voted on. I also don't know the proximity and time to the, the challenging case that we face now where they're challenging GLAM in addition to everything else in, in terms of the town's stance that it's at the wrong location, what you're proposing is in the wrong location. So I don't think we should whittle anything in our arsenal when we're trying to defend those types of cases. We're not opposed to 40 b it's the location that we're opposed to. So if, if the board wants to take a look at these, it sounds like at least there's a majority consensus to take a look at these. I think you should, we should look at them, Mr. Gilbert, if the board wants to do that this evening and show us what, even when it was voted on, I, I, some of the members weren't even here when it was voted on, and I think we should come up with a policy on what, what's going to be comp compelling to us in terms of a sale of town land, especially if it's going to impact a, a case later on down the line. Even if we've had quite a bit of success, and I know that in the previous matters, and I know that in the current developments, there's been success obtaining the um, developer's agreement to put in affordable units, uh, the past two that we've, we've been involved with. So I think if, you, if, if it's the board's pleasure to move forward with it, that's fine. It seems like Mr. Studo. I mean, Madam, I have a suggestion. Before we go through that exercise, can maybe, and I don't think this can be answered tonight, but what would make me feel better, can we have, can maybe there can be a more detailed kind of approach and taking a look like that's something, you know, uh, Mr. Gilberto, you could look at or have surveyed. I don't know how you would do it where, you know, this definitely couldn't impact that. This won't make a big thing. Because I, I don't think that, Showing me pictures on the map is, is not going to sway me because it, it's not going to tell me what I need to know. I mean, it's just going to show me size and, you know, uh, no, uh, an advanced version of a uh, Google satellite. I mean, I can do that at home later. Um, I, so, I mean, is that, that's my suggestion. I think that's the piece of information we need, and I don't think we're going to get that look in some pictures tonight. That's my opinion. Yes, sir, Walmart. I, I almost want to, because I think that people are looking for certainty. I would guess that most people here are looking for certainty. And their, their life and their world isn't going to change much if we buy or not buy it. So I almost want to contact these people to ask them, are you in a, some situation right now where it's really critical that we transact on this? Like if you're not in a critical situation, then would, you, would it be okay if we delayed you for now so that maybe your neighbor who is in a more critical situation. I just don't know everybody's so, situation. So, Mr. Wallman, none of these are critical. They're just parcels of land adjacent to, uh, you know, people's homes or vacant parcels of land that petitioners have come to. Um, I think we've addressed previously critical ones where someone's septic system was located in a town land, so we've swapped. We haven't lost acreage. We've swapped mm -hmm. parcels of land. but. These aren't really critical. The only one I could recall is someone whose driveway is actually, uh, you know, a portion right. of the driveway is town owned land. So none of them, again, are critical. When someone purchases their parcel, they have a title review and they have title insurance and they have a, a bank counsel or their own counsel reviewing title. So this, these would have come up in a title review. So someone's acquired the parcels knowing that it's either adjacent to a piece of land or the driveway's in someone else's land, the town being the person. So I don't think any of these are critical, and if they, even if they are, they're going on auction, so any bona fide purchaser is gonna be able to okay. acquire it. So I think as far as what was already approved previously, it was approved to sell it to auction okay. because a petitioner came forward and said, I'd like to acquire it. How do I go about that? We looked at it. I was thinking we could look at it again 
because it would jog my memory right. in terms of this. We've seen it more than once, a lot of these. So, um, but some of these are, and so the vote was made with really the, the typical res the restrictions that are in place for it. Um, okay. But it's, it's the pleasure of the board, what the board wants to do. <coughs> the board wants to have more information, then we should just move on and let, come back to visit this again, revisit this again at another meeting. Um, and that's what I prefer to do is have a look and, and just to remember why we, why we did vote the way that we did. And then, then we set the, set in motion an auction if we're, you know, we're agree in agreement to move it forward to auction. Because the ones that were set forward to go to auction haven't been auctioned yet, obviously, because they're still on the list. Yeah. Mr. Gilberto, did you have your hand raised? No. Somebody did. Mr. Steven, O'Leary. Yeah. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, I'm in the shadows. I know. <laughs> 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 Just in relation to the, the, the glam issue and, you know, the razor thin margin, uh, that's a, in relation to the uh, current application that we're dealing with there. That's going to be adjudicated at some point shortly anyway, you know, as far as whether everything counts or doesn't count. Uh, so, again, what we decide here has no impact on that at all. And as far as um, the critical nature of of the applications and postponing it. Uh, maybe we want to hear from Mr. Magazine because he's been pretty persistent over the last several months uh, because of the investment that he has and the anticipated and uh, the action that we previously took. Um, but I don't want to speak for him, but I certainly I think the board should, should hear from him in relation to um, the critical nature of our decision and whether we should postpone or not. Mr. Gilbert, were these parcels included in the GLAM calculation for the town for the current litigation? <coughs> these parcels would have been included as deducted from the denominator in the calculation. So because they are town-owned land, they are removed from the denominator to um, I indirectly increase the percentage. They only get added to the numerator in the formula if they are designated for affordable housing and the land is clearly directly related to it. And there is one parcel in here that is in our affordable housing overlay district, but it's not been developed for that purpose at this point. So it's not counting in the numerator, it's just coming out of the denominator. But to answer the question, when it comes to the, fu the formula, yes, they are, they are factored in and the way they get factored is they get removed from the denominator in the formula. Yes, and I, that's why I wanted to look at these because I recall that parcel it happens to be behind the driveway parcel, the parcel that has a... F it is. So that was, we had, the town retained that <coughs> in order to access, it's the only way the town can access the parcel behind it for affordable, the, in the order, affordable That's housing overlay. Carpenter Drive? Th that was Edgewood. No, that wasn't Carpenter Drive. No, it's Edgewood Terrace. Oh, yeah. So it, that's why it's helpful for us to revisit right. this yeah. um, and take a look at well, what, what it is. And I, I, don't, I don't think we can look at the spreadsheet, mm -hmm. which I appreciate there's a lot of effort that went into this, including the listing of the conditions without seeing it so that we can, you know, remember it. If these were at all involved in the GLAM calculation, I understand it was fixed in time, but we can't with a straight face proceed and say, we sold all those off now, but they still should be included. And we know that the opposing council isn't going to say that either. They're going to say they're no longer in their possession. Let's face it. There'll be, you know, a no holds barred fight about that. There's already a no holds barred fight that we're facing. So, and Mr. Studo. Hang on, Madam Chair. And but this is why I said, like, do we, you know, just to, to see what, what Mr. O'Leary said? Because if when Mr. O'Leary says is accurate, and we can get some sort of confirmation, again, I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying it's not accurate, but just some like valid like survey scientific like you know maybe deducted from the, the denominator and see where we come up with if we deducted the whole everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a numbers guy. Number like so to me again, I understand that we don't want to you know we made commitments and we should honor them you know in due time you know and I, I say that with air quotes, but I think that. Um, I like to see that number because everything is going to come down to numbers, you know. So to me, again, I, I feel that 
unless I see what that calculation is going to look like, and this, I'm only speaking for me, I mean, like, again, we can look at everything, but that's not going to give me, actually, that's not going to give any of us here that number. I mean, it's going to maybe, like, to your point, show me what we're talking about, because I, I, I saw a couple, but not everything, but it's not going to get to the underlying thing. What does the Will the denominator change affect that percentage? Because the pictures aren't going to tell us that. And again, it's something where, you know, if that, if that is the case, we're going to be answering to, I mean, I can queue up the video to what the town in 2019 was like. And I, I'm not prepared to say that we were in haste selling off town land because we, of course, we want to do right by our citizen, but we weren't even, we at least didn't even verify that the number would affect us. And that, and that's what I keep butting heads at that, I don't know, I, I just need, I need that number and I don't think that's a number. I, Mr. Gilbert, can you get me that number right now or is that just? Can't I, we just do square footage of all of them and? I did, I mean, it's about a couple hundred thousand square feet. Madam Chair, through you. Mr. Gilbert. So we, we, can, we can provide that information again I would just caution that we expect there will be quite a bit of a, uh, a struggle in front of the Housing Appeals Committee about every acre that goes into that and that that's more where my concern is that I, I'm giving you a snapshot in time that we have a high level of confidence in at the 1.54 percentage but we know that will be a, a subject for considerable deliberation with the Housing Appeals Committee if it would help the board, though, we can provide that. There are a number of smaller parcels here mm -hmm. that we could look at. Um, I, I'm concerned about the 70,000 square foot parcel, which Mr. Magazine was interested in. That That's one that would be of significant concern um, because of how much it might affect things um, in, uh, in nearly two acres. It, it, there hasn't been a vote on that yet. I, I believe on that one there has been, yes. There was a vote to put it to a auction. Vote, a vote to auction. But the, the, I, so what had happened with that one, Madam Chair, was I believe the board wanted it sold in conjunction with another parcel nearby and for some consideration of the value if it were sold together because there was, there was concern about what it might mean for our additional nearby house lots. And we, we've not, I mean, honestly, we haven't picked this up since February of last year, so we haven't done that, that assessment at this point. <coughs> so, but that so, came with the restriction anyways. The seventy thousand square foot one. Excuse I, me. I believe so. I don't I don't want any I I don't want any back and forth. We're trying to make a decision here and we really need to stay focused on what we're talking about here. Mr. Walmer? So I, I think just to, since we're getting into the numbers, right? I mean the new people that have come to us, let's just get them out of there for right now. They're, they're new people, but let's keep them out. And that's the big one, you know, I see at the bottom here. So we're really talking about anybody who's been approved. And then, I, is that a typo? By the way, I'm sorry, Mr. Walter. Is that a typo, Mr. O'Leary? I mean, uh, Mike, for, I think that was a swimming pool request, 435,000 square feet. Yeah, okay. I believe that the spreadsheet, spreadsheet you're looking at is showing that number. It's actually a request for, I think, I think 10,000 square feet. Okay, yeah, that's a, because that's a yeah. big swimming pool. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's the, the request. That's why I mentioned the, the challenge. Right. That one again is new, and I believe the petitioner has been, you know, has submitted something previous. And I think the board's position has been until we know what we're doing with the Carpenter Drive properties, right. it's going to be virtually impossible for us to mm -hmm. to respond to that one. And um, another challenge with that is, you know, we did have an engineer go out there and evaluate that parcel for suitability for a septic system, and that particular location was identified <coughs> as most advantageous for the septic system. Okay. So. Okay. That's going to be a difficult one for us, I think, to decide yes on, separate from that larger conversation on Carpenter Drive, I imagine. All but right. to answer the question, it's only 10,000 square feet. They're not looking for the whole thing. Okay. So my suggestion is we only recal based on, recalculate based on the ones that we've already approved to see mm -hmm. what that number turns out to be. I think I'm suggesting that we should include the Pulte properties that got approved for the affordable housing. That should also be part of the factor because mm -hmm. That is probably imminent. It's it's already they're going to do it. We already I forget how many it's it's five or eight or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, there's eight units that are going to be affordable. I don't think the Wheeler one would apply because I think that's going to be further out. So, but I think the Pulte is a fair one to add in. Mm -hmm. Let's find out what those numbers are. Let's do what Kate says. Let's go, the chair says let's go through and look at these real quickly. Remind ourselves of the ones that we've approved on. I think we have to continue this. 
to we have to consider this again. So in 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 the glam calculation, it's only what we own. Pulte would be affordable housing units offered by the Pulte developer, right? We don't include that as part of town owned or town loan. No, but it's a different. Do we, different Mr. Gilbert? Sorry, Madam Chair, through you. So it will be that would be acreage that would be added to the numerator. Mm -hmm. So we're okay. talking about taking numbers out of the denominator. That would be some sort of acreage added to the numerator in okay. the amount that which I don't know right now. Okay. But there would be a value to that in terms of the number. And, and honestly, that is, this is important, but the thing that really drives the discussion is that numerator because it's such a, a small that number. could potentially counterbalance the whole thing. I don't know. I don't know. That, that it is a possibility. It's a great and that's, point. And that's in that. I mean, they're going to do it as quick as they possibly can. And what that's about the ones? The new ones that are going to be it's coming. probably too far off. Yeah, too far off to they could consider that at this point. Those haven't been approved yet. There's no okay. the proposal hasn't been put in yet. Yeah, they just have the right to do it. Pulte's been approved by the ZBA, and they can just go ahead and build it. All right. When they want. Remember, since we're meeting in person now, it's nice because we we actually have dialogue. But Mrs. McNeil has to record us, and we are we we are tending to talk over each other yeah. right now. So. Um, <laughs> I don't know how she's going re to record all of us at once. All right, so shall, shall we just, let's just do a quick review of this. And Mr. Gilberto, you've already detailed here the vote and the conditions mm -hmm. that were voted on. And then the next next event, which is ready for auction or? Um, yes, and in, in, in some cases that's correct, Madam Chair. In which it hasn't occurred yet. It, has, it hasn't been auctioned yet. Correct. So I'm going to have to try to. Work off of two devices yeah. here to do that. Are you able to do this this evening? For us? Not well, but <laughs> I am certainly willing to, to try. All right. Yeah. Well, let me ask. Uh, can I ask a, another question, Madam Chair? Sure, Mr. Mike, Mr. are you going to be able to do it in a way, Mr. Gilberto, where we're not going to have to do the whole exercise again just because today it wasn't clear enough? I, I would imagine that. We, we're going to have to review it in some level of detail whenever we come to the decision point. I, I do expect that will be the case, but I, I can, I can go as fast as the board members would like. I will, I will try to go as fast as I can. All right. I think we need to just, just take a quick look at this. Yeah, least. take a quick look. I mean, we don't have to vote or make any determination, and some of these were, were already voted anyway. But if we could just do the rundown, and then when we get to uh, Mr. You're, you are you want to speak on eight, right? Eight auto. I want to discuss what I see in front of me, the, the list. You want um, to discuss the whole list? I, 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 I've lived in town for over 50 years. I've been a realtor in this, this town for 28 years. I know practically every inch of this town more than most, except for maybe Steve. Uh, but, you know, so in the coaches on that list, he, he has a parcel on Burroughs Road. Most of those parcels on, at the beginning of that list are just surrounding his house. Most of it's wetlands anyways. He's just, just getting a He's not adding any units, although three of those line item, items are surrounding his house. Okay. Him and I are looking at the 70,000 square feet. One, one parcel I put on the town, town books that's been, was an assessor's and attached to the burden for many years. I, paid $35,000 worth of back taxes on it. And now I've been spending $4,500 a year since acquiring it. And I, we're gonna split that lot. He's just adding it to his lot. It's the side of the hill. You know, you got 70,000 square feet, but it's the side of the hill. You know, I wanted to put my son there three years ago. You know, I'm, been, been, been sitting on it, you know. It's, I, you know, I have five kids. You know, I, I, I had a piece on Redmond Ave that 
everybody put septic systems in. We created wetlands on a very good fossil land that we paid taxes since we bought it in the 60s. Now it's unbuildable. You know, it, you know, it's sometimes, it, you know, we, we had a board. The board made a decision at the time to sell me the land. You know, what's the, to, to say, you get a whole new board and nobody wants to sell, sell the land anymore. Tough, John. It's, uh, you know, there was a board here, they sat here, they voted on it, I worked with them. Not, now we're just rethinking the whole effort over, you know, this possible land sliver. You know, if you also look at the list, some things were already approved, some things weren't approved. You get the capital land, land. That should, should be senior housing anyways. You know, that's something we've talked about over and over again years ago. But senior housing, that's where senior housing belongs. You know, it's, you know, I said my two bits. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Magazine. So, Mr. Gilbert, do you think you might be able to do a quick review? Sure. So that we can at least get, get rolling on this list. So the first, and I'm going to have to refer to the list on my phone and then scroll through the computer here. Five Audubon Road. Thank you. Five Audubon Road is the first parcel. Um, it directly abuts this parcel here. Um, on Poplar test, uh, Terrace, that was a request to Mr. Nicosia to buy um, this uh, sliver of land, if you will. Um, I believe that the upon further consideration, we wanted this other sliver um, at 89 Burroughs Road added to it, and I believe that Mr. Nicosia is um, amenable to to that. And it, that was voted on. It looks like on February 10th of 2020. Um, with uh, the standard minimum bid and uh, I think the standard conditions of uh, restricting development on it. So the, these two parcels were approved. You have a pop-up later. That we I know, I, I'm sorry, it's just very difficult. So this 174 is Mr. Nicosia's home. This one is, yes. So he just wanted to... Um, he wants to buy this parcel and we asked him to buy this parcel. Right. Too. Even combined, that's too little for the city. The, the city wouldn't be able to... <coughs> Um, I mean, the town, excuse me, would, there's not really anything, the town would be able to build on that because of the square footage, but also in the conditions that were imposed, he, Mr. Nicosia wouldn't be able to subdivide and build another uh, home on that. Correct. That's how it was voted. This is Gonzalez. Mr. Megazoo, is that the piece of land you're referring to? No, no. It, it, that, I was referring to that as Mr. Nicosia, that, that the street is actually his driveway. Always has been, always will be. On the other side of the street is all wetlands, which is part, part of the parcel that Mr. Nicosia and I were splitting up. He was, the, the hill pretty much runs from uh, Burroughs Road down, into a gully and then straight straight uphill to get to 196. They pr pretty much where that 20, 20 marker is, 20, 20 feet at, right at 196, yeah. is the top of the hill. It's pretty, it's, I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's, yeah. it's, it's like this and it's very right. steep and goes up. Yep. But now you're saying that you're going to build on it? Yes, I, I, I already own 196. Okay. With, that's where I'm putting my son's house. And the, the time, I, I would have already, they, they would have already auctioned this land if they didn't come to me and ask me to add 3,200, uh, the 197, which is another hill going de down the other direction. And I said, sure, add, add that on, that's fine. And so you don't and, have and a restriction? Then COVID happened. All right. 
Can we get back to the beginning of this list, please? We're not going to really make it through this list if we keep yeah, on. getting yeah. it. Yeah, but you might want to talk about it. It's not in the same order, but 209, 197, 194, 193 was all with Mr. Nicosia. Some of just Nicosia's and the Nicosia and Magazoo. Yeah. And it's all, all the same area right there. Yeah. So rather than going down the list chronologically, it's, it's, it's talk about the privacy areas. for us both at the end of the day. So, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Bill, Bill, Thank you. So um, I, I think I took the first two parcels that are related to each other. I'm going to take the next two that are related to each other, which is uh, 8195 and 8209. So the request, so Mr. Nicosia, I believe at one point you owned this parcel here at 196. Magazoo, Magazoo, Mr. Magazoo, excuse yeah. me. <laughs> but I believe it was a transaction in April of this year. It's under a different ownership now. Is it's that, just put it in a corporation. So it's owned by a corporation to which you're a principal, I assume. Yeah. So, um, and the, you own this parcel. You, I think we're asking for some or all of this parcel, which is town owned. 209. This was voted, it was voted with a restriction. I think you asked for the restriction to be relaxed. I think the vote yeah. was taken to relax the restriction and in the process that we asked you to buy this small parcel as well. That's correct. Both of them together. Yeah. In reality, so just, and again, I think Mr. O'Leary described this pretty well and, um, as did maybe Mr. Warner, but the street is a a accessed Audubon from Lakeside Boulevard. Um, you get to the top of the hill here and it sort of drops off pretty steeply. So um, it looks like you drive in Burroughs Road, but that's not how it actually is laid out on the, on the, on the, on the ground. So the house would be accessible from Audubon, I assume, Mr. Mr. Uh, Magazoo. And you were looking for some or all of, you, I think you were looking for some of this land and we asked you to buy all of it, I think. I, and, and, and I would gonna split it afterwards. Eh? The, the, the relaxing, the, the thing that we lack, relaxed on the, uh, which one called? The restrictions. The restriction was I wanted to put my septic system on that. It was good sort of. So the, but the, the restrictions that apply to that bigger parcel, which I think is 209. On yes. This, is not to be used in and of itself as a separate building lot. That is correct. And also, the other one is not to be used to satisfy minimum zoning or health code requirements for the construction or use of any building on adjoining land, which on 208 it's already built, right? There's a house already on 208. Correct. There's nothing on 196 where you want to build a house. Correct. And that's too small of a lot to build on. No. 196, you can build a home there. That is correct. Okay. Good. And then the other, I'm sorry, Mr. Gilbert, there's one more condition on it. So I, I follow up a question though. I mean, just remind us of the reason that you needed to acquire the land in regard to 196. So that I could put a garage under on 196, 196 and not use that area for a second. Thank you. No building or other structure of any kind shall be erected or maintained on the premises unless the premises is combined with adjoining and premises not used to create new or additional building lot. So, you, it, okay. It's, it's already buildable. It just would work out better as far as the layout, from what I understand. Yeah, you need it. To, you know, to have a garage, you, need, you know, it's going to displace the septic system. So 209, acquisition of 209 was for a septic system? No, yeah, for, for ex expansion of the field. They, uh, otherwise, the, the field would have to end up in front of the house. would have been a real, it, it, again, yeah, I, I can do it that way, but it's not the most practical way to do it, or I could layer it. Okay. Um, 
Madam Chair? Just in, in reviewing the notes, so the restriction that we dropped was the restriction that, that would have um, prohibited the property from being subdivided. And I believe the reason was because you were going to keep some and Mr. Nicosia was going to also require some, right? Yeah. So the remaining restrictions, and I think you just read this, but so if I'm repeating what you said, I apologize, but cannot be used as a separate building lot, right? So we're not creating a separate building lot. Can't be used to satisfy minimum zoning or health requirements for the use of any building on it, um, on adjoining land. And I don't know if that's going to be problematic based on what you just described. And I think that's the point you were making, Madam Chair. And that no building or other structure shall be erected or maintained on the premises unless it's combined with adjoining lot and premises are not used to create new or additional building lot. So it's okay. It's already built. Mr. Gilberto, that um, Audubon is is developed all the way up to the pretty much to the house right. on number thirty uh, forty. Um, lot 196 where my cursor is, Madam Chair, that's the last house. And again, it's accessed from no, what this side. Uh, oh, is there one more house? 177. Yep. Is that 40? No, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the dimensions of the lot. Okay. I've sold that. So place. that's a paper street. <laughs> I remember we talked about this. That's a, also a paper street there that conceivably could have run all the way, but yes, Mr. Maggs was saying it's wetland, so they couldn't no, be a street no. built through there? That, that's straight, it's, it's literally, you, you, drop, have, you have about a 50 foot drop there. Okay, so there's no way that the town's ever gonna need that for roadway reasons. I, I, I don't believe so, Madam Chair, no. And again, it, it's okay. accessed from the north. See, this is all coming back to me now that we're reviewing it. Okay. The, the paper street portion is this side, the southern side. Okay. It's accessible. With hiking boots, with some hiking boots yeah. and a, a, a pickaxe, and four wheeler. <laughs> yeah, you can drive over, but You're it's right. tough. All right. It is okay, deep. so and Mr. Gilbert, does that is that complete? Yeah. The first phase. Yeah. Okay. So does that complete the first four on this list? Yes. Okay. I believe so. And are there any other ones? It looks like Mr. Nicosia and Mr. That's it, right? Just those four. Those four. Okay, so obviously the first two that you showed us, those were set to go to auction. Mm -hmm. Already they were voted to sell with a minimum bid set. The minimum bid just for the newer board members is based upon, you know, the cost. And then and the purchaser would be paying all the recording fees and costs and things of that nature. Um, our legal fees for drawing up whatever documents and auction, etc. And Madam Chair, yes, this is parcel 209. It's the largest parcel that right. we're going to end up discussing. And I, and I don't know. I have not spoken with Mr. Magazine well, and nor with Mr. Nicosia, but I don't know whether there would be an appetite to consider only acquiring a, a portion of it rather than the whole thing. That's fine. Um, that that might. I know it complicates the transaction, but it might address the concern that we all have, and um, that's why I, yeah. I put it out there. I mean, we d and okay. so again, recall the two that we sold in the fall. We we did just that. We only sold right. a portion. We only sold what was necessary. So, to be sold. Uh, so are you suggesting at someone else's expense get it subdivided, get it approved? Is that like we did before? That, that's how we would have to do it. Yeah. I mean, I don't know whether that. There's a lot of risk with that, I understand. But I'm trying, I, that's a big number. That, I mean, 69,000 yes. square feet, that's concerning to me. I mean, I, I, that's the biggest chunk of it's land we're talking about, there. But by, well, by far. What's also of a concern is that Mr. Nicosia owns 174, we're planning to sell 193 and 194. Right now, he owns to the middle of the street. Right. When we sell him the remainder of that, we remove the condition that it can't be used for a buildable lot. So he can put a house in there, right, Mr. Magazo? He could be able to, when you two subdivide 209, he would be able to put a, based on the acreage that he owns and based on you put the, the lack of a condition. You put the wetlands on there. What's the total yeah. square the footage? I, I don't see it. I think what you're going to see. Having enough. And you have a paper road between that and the other side, you, you can't. You're also going to see. You're also going to see this. 
Oh, I see. Okay, it's wet. <laughs> and I'll, I'll, I'll really it goes way down. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Part of what he wanted to purchase was wetlands, but he was maintaining it. I do see, remember see, that. See, see the topography too. That's the drop off right there. I don't know if you can see my cursor. Well, I mean that's. Yeah. So again, most of the most of that parcel is wet. Anyway. Yeah. So okay. We would, we would park. But we would, it sounds like we would be sending Mr. Magazine back to the drawing board again to try to... Well, again, yeah. if you put the wetlands back on there, you can see the portion of which would be of some value or use to Mr. Magazine, portion of the uplands. Not to Mr. Nicosia, then. No, and he was aware of that. So yeah. why does he want it? You could... You have to understand the Nicosias in general. Do you know Janet Nicosia? No. She's the head of the Mountain Farm yeah. uh, Association. And, 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 and the Nicosians have lived there forever. And, and they're, 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 they're strong they're, advocates for the area. They're, they're, they're very, very uh, tree huggy. Mm -hmm. uh, she, she's all about the environment. She's fought the Beneventos. And, yeah, you know, every uh, other non uh, non environmentally friendly group out there, they they, they, they want to protect that area. Yes, that's who they are. She's been they've been a good contributor to the town to the Martin's Pond Absolutely. area. That Martin's Pond yeah. park yeah, is well, largely. I mean, that, that, that doesn't mean friend. that the next owner of the parcel isn't going to be as tree hockey. So I mean, we need to. Yeah, that's I, true. I, I don't think we've. Yeah, but right now it's not on the tax rolls. They're willing to it's acquire it. It's a word. But if it's if it's wetlands and conservation land, we can send us to Magazoo back to the drawing board and say you're not gonna. Yeah. We don't want to sell you that. If that's what the board wants to say, we don't want to sell you the wetlands because I can see what we voted, but it also preceded a lot of uh, school of thought that we now yeah. have based on. Uh, current situation or might not have been a unanimous vote because I'm a tree hockey too so I'm not in favor of <laughs> divesting ourselves of trees um, or wetlands so Mr. Mr. Um, Studo. Just a question if if you and the board all of us were willing to entertain that you just you know took what you needed from that 209 yeah would that would that put you in a bad spot with uh, Mr. Nicosia if you're like, well, they don't mind selling me half, but they don't want to sell you your half? I don't know if he hear it, except knowing that, you know, he don't always want to control that spot. If he knows the town will never sell it, he'll, that'll make him comfortable, and it, it, you know, it's it's his. Nobody else uses that yeah. land but him, anyways. Again, it, it just yeah. it, took, would it put it be in a bad position with him? No, yeah. and friends really. It's more of you know when Mike comes back with those numbers, right? Yeah. And I think they will affect a little bit. I mean, unless square footage just doesn't matter, and I, I I've learned that it really does right now. Yeah. Um, it might be something where if you get what you need for your actual building, not just yeah. to preserve whatever we're preserving yeah. you know there's actual something because that's what I, I, I feel like you have a purpose for it you know yeah. I'm not saying keeping it for the environment's not as important but I think that like there's a lot of people that could do that and if it's wetlands anyways I mean I can't even I'm on wetlands and like I you know I'm a, I only own half of my land I found out yeah. after I moved here so <laughs> um, <laughs> Particularly this week. Yeah. In, 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 <laughs> yeah. You know, he, he, in, in his mind, and I know the video he's, you know, the other thing he's thinking is he always has a parking space up the top of the hill. Whenever they, they get the water, the, the, the floods down the pond. And, and so, you know, we need to let them park up the top of the hill. That's yeah. so I mean, the, the bottom line is exactly. another board didn't yeah. have to deal with what we're dealing with right now as far as square footage and glam and, and everything that's going on. So 
I think that that's fair. That we're proposed. So you're still going to be able to do what you need to do. But we're not giving up so much square footage. So can we go back to the parcels, too? I just want to. The list, Madam Chair? I'm sorry, the no. other picture. The, the picture just the, showed all the lots. Just the map picture. So, Mr. Magazine, you're the owner of the ones to the north, northeast. One, who owns 208? That's some guy from Tewksbury. Okay, so, you know, this wouldn't be for you either, that if, yeah. if, we, had, if we agreed to... If, if sell a portion, it would go to auction. So right. That, that is correct. That individual might have an interest too in acquiring it. I mean. Yeah. But so. If so and only if we make it all the way back to his land. You know, if I go out and get it engineered, I'd engineer in a straight line, continuing the lot. To mm -hmm. work for you. Yeah. And, and it would have no value to anybody else to, to, to bid on because they couldn't put a house on that. How many square feet, John, were you anticipating? I know it was going to be a split with the Nicojas. This would be certainly different. Yeah. So the square footage that you might be looking for the, the cr cross might, might, be, the might be 10,000 10, uh, 10, square feet. Say that again? Maybe 10,000 square feet. You know, something like that, as opposed to. No, I'm just looking yeah. at what you have is 4,800, and what you were looking at, you know, is 1.6 acres. But you, my guess is, you were going to retain a significant portion of the upper of the uplands, as opposed to Mr. Nicosia. You know, you might have, you know, acquired, you know, a sixth of an acre, or yeah. a point six, okay. you know, as opposed to. If you do 10,000, 10, 10, I also used the, that 3,200. You know. Nobody else would have any use for either. Which right. is also town owned, right? Which is also town owned. Which we were also that, talking that, that about. You already, that, that's the one that you wanted me to take. Right, that was part of the discussion. Yeah. So with, with 197. 197's town owned, that was on the list also. Yeah, and, and we encouraged them to purchase that, a bid on that also. So, but wouldn't that resolve your issue that you're talking about wanting to acquire oh, 200? 100%. So, why are we even talking about 209 at 197 when we're resolving? No, he's talking with the 10,000. Well, the, the 197 is, is a side bait all day. I was taking that more as a buffer. Oh, but, see. Okay. You know, if you don't want 197, okay. that's fine too. No, but no, I was just wondering. The, 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 the better land for me would be on the 209. Besides, besides the other so, side. So, okay. right. so if we wanted to retain the 3,200 square feet, that's not a problem <coughs> either. That wouldn't impact his plans. Okay. Yeah. So I think that probably we're sending you back to the drawing board on that. If that's the board's prerogative to do that and there's nothing prohibiting us from doing that, Mr. Gilberto. So the goal would be Mr. Magazoo identifies a plan the smallest amount necessary to be combined with 196 would not buy 197 at this point we would keep 197 since it sounds like it was only going to be a buffer is that yeah. correct yeah. that would sort of minimize the acreage we're talking about here yeah. I think okay is that something I'm just going to pull the board if they're in agreement to send Mr. Magzu on his way again with the regards <laughs> <laughs> but it seems to be a, a you know viable compromise to where we're at now and 2010. Uh, 20, 21. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. O'Leary said. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I appreciate the, my colleagues considering all of this, too. I think it's fair. Mr. Walner, okay. you're good with yeah. that. Mr. Stewart, good. Mrs. Gets out. I think it's fair. I'm good with it, too. Yeah. I know we're sending you back to the drawing board, but I think we've. Uh, I'm going to go out and hire the engineer and come up with something. You know, Great. Back and you. Perfect. Perfect. I'm going to bring it to. So it, it would ultimately go to the planning commission as a uh, probably as a, an A and R type approval. But if you want to bring it to us first, um, you, you'll have an opportunity to. Uh, I, I think I'd have to bring it to you to get it approved. They can't approve it if I don't own it. So, so they can they can approve it, but then they you they can't. It, it, nothing will happen with it because we have to file it with the registry, obviously. So, but but if you want to bring it to us first, and I, I don't know what your timeline is, but as soon as you can. Um, we can go over it here, make sure it kind of meets everyone's expectations. 
in terms of the size, and then you can go to the planning commission. And, and also just uh, just in case for your timeline, we have uh, we have one scheduled meeting next month, so there's only one after like or then it closes to September. I just wanted to yeah. make yeah. sure you knew well, that. Well, this is going to take a while, right? Yeah, I don't know how quick how long the other one go. Engineers don't work. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like no one's working right now in July, but yes, yeah. I agree. I'm lucky if I get back to you guys in Okay, so we need to we do need to move yeah, along um, on this because we've only gone through four. Thank you, Ms. Thank you. Thank we've you. only gone through the first four in an hour's time. So um, I actually don't know what we decided to do with the first two. Are we uh, okay to have the town administrator move forward with auction? This is of 193 and 194, which are the two parcels adjacent to Mr. Nicosia's. Um, which the board had already voted yeah, already to sell voted. today. Are we in agreement to, you know, just have the TA move forward with the auction, public auction on that? It's what, 2,500 square feet. Mr. Uh, O'Leary? Yeah, I, I am, but again, I thought Mr. Uh, Walner's suggestion of reaching out to the individual saying, are you okay with us holding off right now? If you're still interested. Are you okay with us holding off right now? And if they say, no, we really want to do it, I'm okay with moving forward. But if they're willing, I mean, no one else is going to buy it. Okay, and, it's my understanding our situation, right? Okay. So, I mean, is that, is I have like no problem. It's just we, a courtesy. Will we take yeah. that next step is just to reach out to the Nicosias and... But it seems probable that that would be good things to talk about. Yes, we'll yeah. move forward on it. Yeah. I think we're all a little unsettled given the issues that we've seen mm -hmm. in the litigation, so... Yeah. All right, okay, so let's move on to uh, 13 Edgewood Terrace, Ty and Ty Cornwall and Melissa Campbell. This is the driveway that's on the parcel, which is the access to the adjacent. It's in an affordable housing overlay. Okay. Madam Chair, through you, that is correct. There is uh, currently a uh, driveway, we believe, at least partially located on this parcel. Um, I, I have been in conversation with the town planner, and I think Mr. Studo has heard some of the conversation. That, um, th there is a, a conversation that the Planning Commission is having, I believe, with Habitat for Humanity regarding potentially um, constructing affordable units uh, uh, at, in, the, in the area we're talking about here, the, the, this parcel in particular, um, for affordable housing. Um, that would require, obviously, approval by the select board and most likely approval by town meeting as well. You yeah, I can bring it up. Yeah, I'm sorry. Show the show the members and, the parcel. And if I can add, like that, what because it was uh, a conversation we had, and it is not. They haven't made up their mind how many. Mike, am I saying mm -hmm. that correct? Is it over a how yeah, many or where? So the uh, that's another consideration. Which I I mean, I don't know how we can predict it, but I, I can tell you that you know, based again, based on where we're looking at. Them coming in and wanting to build affordable housing to me will take precedence over everyone on this list. I mean, just because of where we're at. I mean, again, we can't get, I mean, if they want to buy, I'm not saying they want to buy anywhere here, but there are a couple of lots that they have expressed interest in, so I don't know. Um, so if three. you can see from here, if you can look at this, this is Edgewood Terrace, and the, the, 225 are the petitioners whose driveway is actually located uh, what, like 10 feet into 224. Mm -hmm. For some reason, there appears to be enough on the other side for them to have a driveway or, you know, perhaps, you know. And so that is behind that lot. That lot is behind that lot. It, our, our overlay for affordable housing. And all of those in the back, Mr. Gilbert, or what town owned, am I correct in saying that? From 239, 239 is? It's very hard to read, but I believe the, the parcels are 237, 238, 239, and 224 that we're talking about here. That, that are town owned. And, and zoned for affordable housing. What's, what about 236? Oh, is it not showing up? No, I'm yeah, sorry. You got to click the, the overlay. Click the button. So uh, it, it's on my computer screen. It's just not showing up there, oh. and I'm not I'm not sure why. Um, but let me turn that off. 
So this parcel, if you can see the, the white cursor, 224, town owned, and also in the overlay district. And then these three parcels, 230s, oh, now there it is. <laughs> so you can see the sort of area where the, the, it gets really thick. These are the town owned parcels. 37, 38, 39. And 224. <coughs> Portion behind it is is that a, is that is not a broker? That's a paper. Paper street. street, yes. So that basically the really the access to that would be through that wood parcel two twenty four. I'm going to try to see if we can bring up. Um, and there was discussion about having adequate access to those parcels. Should we sell a portion of two twenty four? A very is a very narrow ability to create a road. I think it's just enough space to create a road there with the 40 feet, I think, was the discussion. So this is one where you know, the Planning Commission is working on something much like it is with Carpenter Drive. You know, I, I don't know if we just want to consider it, consider those two similar and um, you know, once we know what we're looking to do on the on those parcels for potential affordable housing construction, we can then determine how much we could sell. Um, there is a trespass issue, as you as you know, um, and you know, it's a little bit different than the Carpenter Drive situation where there is not a trespass issue at this point. Okay, so the board's pleasure is hold off on this. I'm going to put words in your mouth, but I'd like to hear just from you, Mr. O'Leary. I just would. Uh, like for the planning commission and their deliberations to take into consideration uh, the trespass issue and if it can be accommodated let's see if we can accommodate it you know and if we can't it can't but i mean let's uh, to me i think it was 10 feet they needed it was a small amount in order to no i know but 10 feet's the difference with the purpose no 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 i know but if it can't if it can't work it can't work yeah. but i think it should it should be at least taken into consideration and again this is going to be a the restrictions are sometimes different when it comes to creating these pork chop lots. Right. My recollection of that triangular piece where you might think, isn't that utility owned, Mr. Gilberto? Uh, that you, big, big triangular piece is not town owned, right? Right back here? To the uh, south, southwesterly corner is a triangular piece that abuts 240. Is that it? Come, if you this right here. Yeah, I... Oh, about 240, I'm sorry. Wasn't that utility-owned? Um, Jonathan and Christine Bird. Who will then? This parcel over... I'm sorry, I didn't realize how much of a lag there is with this cursor. Go back to the map, just to the regular map rather than the topography. Is it consensus to hold off on this, Mr. Walner? Yes. yes. Mr. Studo, Mr. Gonzalez? Yes. Yeah. Mr. O'Leary? I think we can move on to the next one. Um, it's going to be hard to go through these if we're not able to break it up. Um, yeah. 55 Old Andover Road, we voted to sell twice. <laughs> these Three are all together, right? Same petitioners. They are um, 55 Old Andover, 57 Old Andover, and one bear. Are you uh, able to bring those up? I, I am on my computer, but apparently not on this one. Um, <laughs> yeah. So let me see if I can restart this. What's that? suggest to my colleagues that I believe we put this together and I think it's an important exercise to kind of review this but if we might review this when we have the capability to look at it more go through it more quickly I think Mr. Magazoo came to the last meeting wanting us to address at least the Audubon and we've done that for him and I know Mr. Wally you're saying to check and see the urgency but really none of these are they're not needed for dwelling purposes anyway. 
nor would they be sold for demand purposes based on the conditions of some of the ones that we voted. So if it's if I could suggest to my they, colleagues that we, we take a look at the rest at the next meeting or yeah. an, an upcoming yeah. meeting. Yep. We also have a strategic planning meeting. I think we're gonna have yep. to discuss some policy on conservation, divesting of conservation land, wetland, open recreation space that we might have or that people might, you know, be using that is town owned and you know, coming up with a policy on divestiture of land. We probably have one because we have these conditions in place. So maybe we dust it off and see if we want to update it given our current, you know, development situation. Oh, all right. So th this is, I think, the I've last. I've talked long enough, and it actually <laughs> got called. Thanks, for Ma Madam that. Chair. Through you, I, I actually believe these are the last of the the more they're not urgent but more pressing ones. That three parcels they've already been voted okay. um, for for sale: um, four thousand five hundred fifty square feet, seven thousand seven hundred fifty square feet, and twenty five hundred square feet. All town owned. This is um, twenty five hundred. All presently town owned, with the petitioner being, I believe, these residents here, Peter Brayton and um, Cherie Trevi. They have um, um, asked to buy this land here. And just um, for the for the record, we voted restrictions on those properties, um, which would allow them to be conjoined or, or, or uh, joined up with the principal, the, the house lot that they're in right now at lot 53, um, that they would not be able to be subdivided and that they would not be used to create an additional housing unit. So th these ones have already been voted um, at this point, all three of them. And this one here also is uh, the adjacent parcel, which is down below here. The access, though, is out on Hanson Road, I believe. Yeah, please show it to me as Right. It came out here and then comes back into that. Oh, that's right. This is like a steep, steep slope going right down. They had me go visit them about a month ago, so I could walk them in and see it. Okay. So for my colleagues and boards, thought on moving forward with this, Mr. Larry. Uh, in this one, I am because I. I recall the, the discussion that's been ongoing for a long period of time, and uh, they would have to, again, to join everything. So uh, I'm in favor of moving forward on that one. Mr. Walner? I am in favor. Mr. Studo? Mm -hmm. Mrs. Gonzalez? Okay. So we put that to auction, Mr. Gilberto? We, we, we'll move forward with the auction, yep. Okay. It's already been voted. Okay. The, the remaining um, are either. So you, you see one down below there. The board actually has already um, took, considered it and voted not to sell it, or, or, or there was lack of a desire to even second a motion to sell it. So I don't think that requires further discussion. Uh, Mr. Sanchez, is, I've not heard from him, I don't think, in some time. Um, I haven't checked with Karen on it. I'm looking to Jennifer to see if that name is ringing a bell for any phone calls that have come in. Um, I think it's one that sort of this one will, is, be, will be okay this with. This is up in my, it is, my yes. neck of the woods. And uh, it's directly behind Mr. Sanchez's house. There's no urgent need that I'm aware of at this particular time. But, but they would be interested if it if that opportunity if it comes up, up if the opportunity presents itself. And um, I, I know there was Miss uh, Rickers was on the other side, the other page. That the more the newer ones uh, from uh, Mr. Parent um, have not been considered. There's no previous vote on them. And I think that we could yeah. reasonably say, you know, we're going to hold off on considering at this point really in time. 40, 000, 40, yeah, 000? what is the correct square yeah, footage for Rika's request? For Rika's, it's 10, I, I believe it's 10,000 square feet yeah. she's looking for. She's not looking for the, a huge number. But I, again, the issue is the location as it relates to development. Mm -hmm. we, I, I think a number of us were on a meeting with the Planning Commission. We heard a lot of concern from the residents on the parsonage side of that property. This is the opposite side of that where the septic fields would likely need to, to go. Um, so um, I just I think it's going to be difficult to make a decision on that parcel. That's carpentry. What, what about yeah. Highland Terrace? So it's talking like forty three. Yeah. So one, one of them is a I, I believe a, a roughly an acre size lot, and then there's a couple of much smaller lots. That, that's my understanding. Okay. Like combined together, and they're not 
capable of being combined together. Um, they could be. I think they're being sought together. Yes. But um, one of them is very large. Um, and I've just actually highlighted this so you see it. It's a, it's a pretty good size lot. Okay. And again, those would, those are you know, not considered, have not even received consideration at this point in time. Okay. All right. Okay, well, thank you for putting that together for us. And it's not my best work, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> It was on the fly. It, it helps to see it again because yes. we haven't visited in a while, so we have never seen it. So it's important to see that. Really go through the exercise of that. All right. So if we move on now to Please. legal bills. Madam Chair, I move to approve legal bills for May 2021 in the amount of 18,184.75 as follows. Coleman and Page PC, 9,025. Coleman and Page PC, 45,0450. 20 Elm Street, 40B Project, 46,80 for 18,184.75. Second. Motion by Mr. Sudo, second by Mr. Sudo. I don't know if we wanted to put the fine. Yeah. Aye. Aye. Yeah. Madam Chair, I move to approve legal bills for June 2021 in the amount of 10,764.35 as follows. Coleman and Page PC, 76.50.35. Coleman and Page PC, 28.86. 20 Elm Street, 40B Project, 78. American Arbitration Association, 150. For a total of 10,764.35. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Just, uh, we're just, just as far as the uh, budgetarily, how did we end up there? And what um, we, do? We, we knew we were going to end up over, and we did end up over, and we sought and secured a approval from the Reserve Fund from the Finance Committee two weeks ago. I believe the total was $18,000 that we requested, but they did approve it, and I, I would say thank you to the Finance Committee for their consideration. All those, any further discussion? All set? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All set with legal bills and our next yep. order of business and town administrator's report. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. Through you, um, I did not file a written report, but just by way of a verbal report, uh, I think a number of residents and the board members are aware of some challenges that we experienced with line painting last week. <laughs> um, you see it around town. Um, a few areas on um, the, uh, I guess, northern side of town, if you will, particularly Haverhill Street, at North Street and North Street at Main Street, Chestnut Street at Haverhill Street. Um, we are uh, aware. Um, the DPW director has been in discussion uh, with the town's uh, contracted line painting company. So we, 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 meaning the town's employees, do not paint the roads. We use a contractor that we um, secured through a joint procurement with the town of Middleton and the town of Linfield, as we have done every year. Um, due to a shortage in the standard paint that we, uh, we use, uh, uh, replacement paint was used and uh, it appears that for whatever reason the humidity levels the evening that the painting was done did not allow it to cure as quickly as it normally does and believe it or not it usually cures in like two minutes it's pretty fast that it will dry when it's put down so um, the police detail that's with the line painting will normally keep the traffic off at that point in time and it's not smeared for in, in most instances but in this case um, the product didn't perform um, as it was expected to um, for those who have asked, the white lines, we didn't have that issue with. The product was not a challenge. Um, we're not paying the vendor for the painting that was done with the yellow paint. Um, uh, and I know the DPW director informed the vendor today that, that was going to be the case. Um, we're working with the vendor to get them back in here to clean up the mess that's in the roads. Um, and then uh, we will ultimately repaint, although it is possible we may not do, do so until much later this season when the material is available. Uh, probably mo most importantly for residents um, and others who were impacted by this and got paint on their cars, um, we've put out uh, uh, an update on the town website. We got a number of calls um, that we have um, discussed with the contractor. We've provided the information to the contractor and we are overseeing, I should say we are in touch with them regarding their response. And the plan is to, that they will be contacting, I mean the contractor will be contacting each of the affected residents or, pro or vehicle owners to schedule an opportunity for um, the vehicle to be uh, cleaned, most likely at, a, at the DPW garage by a contractor that um, our line painting contractor will arrange. Um, that's going to be scheduled directly with any residents who were impacted. Um, and if that doesn't work for any particular reason, then the line painting contractor will work to try to find another resolution. Um, so there were a number of people who were impacted. I think we had 26 claims that came in 
um, from that evening. Um, but no one can recall that happening in recent years. I mean, you've seen the occasional smear where something has happened, but it's rare um, and, and not to the extent that it's happened. So, you know, I, I know I've not had the opportunity to speak with the board members with regard to this. I, obviously, I was uh, out of town last week, but uh, you know, I was in touch with DPW and the police department uh, when it uh, came to my attention. And um, I just want to, you know, thank the residents for their patience as we go through this. Uh, a number of residents were upset, uh, clearly for very obvious reasons. Uh, but I, I think we have a plan to, to rectify the situation, both for the residents and their private property, meaning their vehicles, and for the public property at the intersections, which look pretty terrible right now. Bad and month for latex paint usage. Yes. Would you say? Yeah. And so. Blur lines. Uh, there's still straight lines that are blurry. You there's a little blurry. Rock. You can't pass anyone. You just. Yeah. It, it it's is not your eyes, it's the road, but you it, still can't pass. It is eye-opening to the number of people who apparently make the turns early, if you look at how it's going to go. But there are no charges yeah. that will be filed, no citations that will be issued for that. you got a tracer, and you got the tire marks, so you can identify the car. Where's the FBI? Right. Anything else, Mr. Gilberto? Uh, I don't believe so, Madam Chair. Thank you. Any questions? Anything else said? All right, we'll move on to... Board member reports, Mr. O'Leary. Um, just uh, wastewater uh, committee, and get, we have another meeting scheduled for tomorrow. But there's been I'm sure the chair's probably been in, uh, informed by the administration. Uh, significant uh, uh, change in opportunities for us in relation to wastewater uh, up in the North Andover section of 114, uh, Massachusetts, Massachusetts Department of Transportation um, is at a 25% stage of their planning to do some major uh, infrastructure work uh, in a stretch of 114, which happens to correspond with one of the routes that we're talking about tying into Greater Lawrence uh, Sewer District. Um, discussions between our consultants, uh, DPW Director Administration uh, and MassDOT uh, came through as very favorable in relation to uh, possibility of our uh, being able to piggyback on the opening of Route 114 simultaneously. Um, that being said, it would provide us with a tremendous opportunity for a cost savings in relation to that portion of the project if we were to move forward with it. And uh, I think it would be important uh, for us to engage in more lengthy discussion with our consultants and our, the administration in relation to how we're going to move forward, and if we are going to move forward with, uh, with sewage. Uh, but again, this is a Tremendous opportunity for Town of North Reading in relation to being able to tie in with the Mass DOT with a major reconstruction of a 114. This is up pretty much in front of uh, Merrimack College area, right where 125 and 114 meet. Mm -hmm. So a small section of 125, the first set of lights, take a left and head towards Lawrence, all the way down to about where that uh, Boston chicken. Uh, it's so it's a long way down there. And so that being said, road's going to be opened up anyway. They're going to be doing major infrastructure, moving of utilities. Um, we spoke with them preliminarily in relation to a desire to play some um, sewage main up through there. And they said, sure, show us your plans. And uh, they gave us a timeline as to where they're anticipating you know, their project to be underway. Uh, they're willing to work with us. and. Uh, I think it's something that, uh, an opportunity that's not going to present us to us uh, in the near future for a long time to come. In addition to that, if we do decide to piggyback with them, uh, or if we don't, and we try to move forward and we get permitting through the state again to, to reopen those roads, we're talking about curb to curb uh, paving if we dig it up again. Yeah. Uh, so just that cost alone is going to be significant. So again, we have some major decisions to make. I think we probably would have, if we so inclined, after being informed by our consultants and the administration, to move forward. Um, we're probably going to need some action at October Town Meeting. So uh, we may want to try and find another night in short order to just go over uh, what the opportunities are. Uh, we've reached out, uh, we're going to be reaching out to Greater Lawrence Sewer District again, just to make sure that uh, the opportunities are still there for us. Again, we had a meeting four or five years ago, and some of us were involved in, uh, where they said they had the capacity and the ability to, to take us on, and a willingness to take us on. We just want to make sure that that uh, opportunity is still there. There's no reason to believe that it isn't, but uh, there's been, there'll be some outreach, if it hasn't taken place already, 
um, to set up and schedule a meeting just to meet with them again. It would be subcommittee agreements that I was the student myself and administration and, uh, consultants. Uh, so again, terrific, tremendous opportunity, uh, something that we need to take a, a serious look at and uh, decide how we're going to proceed. So, uh, so pretty exciting relation to the, the timeline. You know, so it's uh, yeah, they're talking about doing their project in 2023, I believe, correct? Yes. Uh, to bid in the fall of uh, 2022, construction 2023. So it's, it's great just news. around the corner. Great news. So it's, uh, you know, we were reaching out. We knew that the project was, was taking place with uh, DOT. Uh, we weren't sure what their reaction was going to be, and they greeted us with open arms. So that's hot. <coughs> so now it's up to us. Uh, we decide what we're going to do. So that's the that's the big news for any uh, liaison outside as I have, and I'll hold old and do business until later. Um, Up to you. How no, you, want you can say it now, but I okay. just, you and Mrs. Studo are on the team with the TA. Um, now you'll probably be ramping up those meetings, right? Correct. Oh, we, yeah, we're okay. yeah, meeting at least monthly right now, but yes. this will step up the timetable if the board decides that we should move forward. Okay, I just remember before when, when the other portion of this there were multiple meetings there'll be multiple meetings in addition if we decide to move forward now that we're also talking about additional permitting if you recall back when we were doing the the deal with Andover and the basin transfer and the the EIR FEIR <coughs> process we ran in tandem both the water and wastewater uh, permitting application at the tail end we decided to take out the wastewater portion get the permitting for the water which was successfully done and now completed. Uh, so now, based upon this timetable, the timetable for permitting uh, will be stepped up, which will incur some additional costs, but again, be definitive in relation to getting state approval um, for the wastewater. You know, we can decide what the timing is in relation to the, the project, but the permitting process is going to have to take place sooner rather than later. So infrastructure was one of the um, pieces that we're entitled to use the the uh, ARPA funds we right. received. Mm -hmm. So maybe that is something as a board we need to really vote on if that's going to be put towards that or if we can other get other funding. I know there's federal funding too. For there's, there's also a lot of other money, you know, federal and state money available for specifically wastewater mm -hmm. uh, projects. So, so mm -hmm. I guess now's the moment in time mm -hmm. to be Correct. trying to get as much of that as we possibly can. Yes. Offset this. Again, this is a this is a huge opportunity for us yeah, to uh, to do it simultaneously with the states digging up 114. Yeah, it's amazing. So, uh, it's a gift. <laughs> All right. Do you want to do your old and new business? Sure. Yeah. Together? Matter of fact, I was going to talk about uh, just uh, the need for us to, to sit down. You know, I know we're going to have strategic planning sessions, but um, you know I think we need to have some clear parameters as to what these additional federal and state funds uh, are going to be available timelines associated with it and what we believe you know would be a prioritization of the use of those funds and does dovetail with this but again there may be other projects and priorities that will come out of the discussion too and I think the communication should be very open and uh, public should be invited to, to come up with some ideas too once we explain what the parameters are and what we can and can't do with it so I think that's important um, the only other couple of things was uh, RMLD I thought was going to be scheduled to come this evening but <laughs> didn't make it. Ms. Gilberta. Thank you, Madam Chair. So we did speak with RMLD about coming this evening, um, and they are actually providing, I believe, an annual report update to their board either this week or next, and ask that they be afforded the opportunity to update us after that. Yep. Um, so uh, August 16th would be our next opportunity to do so. Great. And then the other thing is, um, in light of the first half of the month almost being over here and our water usage and the presentation that we had just a few weeks ago in relation to the amount of water we have generally sell which impacts the ability to set our rates um, we're going down as the probably the wettest July ever which means we're not gonna be selling as much water um, I, I looked it up actually 2018 was was what 2018 we the, the, the most rain so far. So, no, no, we have a record. 2018 was a record. Sorry to yeah. interrupt. 
Oh, I, yeah, but we're, we're, we're on record now, though. I mean, we're only what, the 12th of July, right. and we're at Six almost July. nine inches of rain. Um, you know, but that s severely impacts uh, the revenue stream for the water department, and you know, maybe I'm sure Mark is. Oh, Mark, <laughs> Mark looks at it hourly, but I mean, <laughs> as far as uh, um, you know, the potential impact going forward if July really doesn't have the amount of usage and sales, you know, are we going to talk about revisiting rates again? It's certainly a possibility, depending right. upon how the summer goes, and I you know, would envision we probably would be doing something in September if that were, were going to be the case. But you know, there's obviously, we're, we're glad there's rain. We're glad yes. that, 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 that it's been out here. Maybe there doesn't need to be so much rain, <laughs> um, but there could be an impact, yeah. And we, we saw how volatile it can be in 2018, and we saw it again last year, too. Right. So. Other than that, I'll say Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the biggest thing is the, the UMass gerontology study we had done um, earlier in the year. Um, and so we have the first draft of slides. I gave, we gave some feedback, um, Catherine McKay, Jen Ford, and myself. And then um, we got the second draft, and I thought it was in good shape. I presented it to the few people that are still in the COA board, and after I presented it, I realized it needed a lot of work. So after two days of Revising the slides, um, I, I haven't heard their feedback yet because I just sent it to them. But um, I'm hoping that if we have room, hopefully I can get them in here to at least show it to the board on the 16th because I think it sets up a lot of things for our strategic plan. So if, I don't know if we, I, I'll, you know, I would need it 45 minutes maybe to, I wouldn't present the slides. I have AARP coming, but um, not AARP, UMass Gerontology. But um, I think it'd be kind of help set us up for strategic planning. So I think it leads to a lot of good things. That's what I'm seeing so far. So if I can get that done, I'll try to get that done um, by the 16th. But I'm not sure 45 minutes is available because remember we have a public mm -hmm. hearing and we're packing on a lot on there. And we're starting so, with. But I think maybe a, a smaller presentation. Is that possible? Maybe. I mean, I'll try right. to see if I can do a consolidated okay. version. Yeah. Right. It's pretty broad. It covers a lot of ground. So I don't necessarily know how long the public hearing will be, but you have to factor in that it could go, you know, for a bit. And the audit review, Madam Chair. And the audit review always um, goes for a bit. All right. And the RMLD presentation does too. <laughs> And whatever else we conjure up all with. <laughs> <laughs> all right, may not happen. We're already talking just with those three items on lengthy meeting, so. All right. You don't want to be doing that presentation at the end of all of that. Yeah, no, definitely really not. It requires fresh, attention. fresh minds. Yeah, so, yeah. perspective. Yeah. Yeah. So if nothing else, at our strategic planning meeting, I will bring in things that I think are takeaways from oh, that. Yes. So for our consideration. Yeah. I may want to, if you can share the report with us. You know. That's the part that I haven't been happy with is when I show it to people, they just don't understand what it means. And I frankly don't understand either, so I'm fixing the oh, slide. Okay. So you can actually self read it. But okay. I think a presentation is order as well. So that's where, you know, it sounded great when they explained it, but then when I tried to explain it, it was like, wait, this isn't adding up at all. So I got to do better. Anyways, it's coming and it's, it's good information. I think it sets up a lot of direction for the town about how to handle things going forward, in my mind. I just have one more old. Really Happy good. birthday. <laughs> Mr. Is that today? Yep, it yeah. is today. Oh, happy birthday. That's why I, I, that's old I business or new business? I don't know. Oh, happy birthday. <coughs> Current business. <Okay. laughs> Leah brought up some fudge stripe cookies. So. That's, it's congratulations. Thank you. Right. Still surviving. Thank you. Mr. Studio. I'll just uh, piggyback very briefly on what Mr. O'Leary said. So to me, large projects need a catalyst. This is it. Um, the momentum to get this done from all levels. I mean, the state doing this, like I said, I mean, it just, you know, I mean, if we can get it just to the edge of like Main Street Town, but that's a big thing where, to me, that solves a lot of the problem of, well, what are we gonna get first? What's gonna, what's gonna force us to make a decision on something? And I think this is the catalyst. And I think that if, if it's explained correctly, I think it's a slam dunk at town meeting. I really do, because I, I, I feel that everyone I've talked to, I haven't heard one person yet tell me that they don't think sewer would be a good idea. And if that person exists, they can come to my house, and by the time they leave, they, they'll think it's a good idea. Um, also, from a standpoint of um, funds being put into it, now granted, Congress can be Congress, but at the very least, if you are to believe 
both sides. The if you read into the bipartisan infrastructure bill, which an army and analyst that I do business with have, there is a lot of money, and wastewater is probably the most funded because. Um, I think I mentioned this number before, to fix our looming septic disaster, we need $3 trillion over the next 10 years. Now, I'm not saying we're going to get that, but there's at least going to be money, as I think Mr. O'Leary brought up and you said, like, there's just going to be a lot of resources. And I think if done correctly, I think we can finance half of this project on somebody else's dime, for lack of a better word. Well, it's our dime through taxes, but you know what I mean. So I, I do think, though, that, you know, um, it's early stages, and uh, I thank Mr. O'Leary for that summary. I got the summary later from uh, Mr. Gilbert. I wasn't able to make that call. I will tomorrow. But I do think that it's an opportunity where, it, unless we're not seeing something that pops up, I, I think it's, it's going to be really hard to pass up, and I think we'll regret if we do. So, um, and then I have, uh, I have no new business. I'm just recalling or hearkening back to Mousieri with this figure saying there's just doing these figures over and over and over and over again to trying to figure out a way to fund this that wasn't going to be born on the backs of you know the the trail down 28 or you know assessments and etc without it being so significant that it was undoable and I just think we need to we need to be going after every possible pool of funds federal <coughs> state whatever's available and I think this is a gift, like you both are saying. So we need to move move on it, and we and you have been working on this, and we have as a town been focused on. It. You have been. This is going back all those years, working on this piece of it, making sure that that was in our agreement, so that we could move on this. So I I'm, I agree. We should move, be moving full steam ahead on full mm -hmm. steam ahead on this one, and seeing what's what other funding we can we can access to be able to pay any portion of this now while the funds are available. That seems to be such a priority in all of, in every piece of this extra funding that's being put out there. So well, we should grab it. Yeah, and, and again, you know, depending upon the funding sources and what's available, that's going to take some time to sort through also. But again, we can still phase this in. And uh, again, this, of course, this portion of it uh, would be a major commitment on our part so that, you know, whether it be in the next two, three, four, or ten years or twenty years from now, you know, the infrastructure would be in the ground, be there. And, um, mechanisms for paying for it would be all in place. And to me, it's just, uh, this is the first true opportunity that I've seen. Um, by the way, part of my initial campaign for the board was, you know, sewerage on Conquer Street. That was 1988. So, I mean, you know, we've been talking about this for a long time, but this truly is, uh, while we had an opportunity for Concord Street through the NWRA, um, that wasn't enough. And uh, this truly does uh, give us an opportunity to, uh, to capitalize on it and uh, partner with the state on it. And I think it's something we need to strongly consider moving forward on quickly. So, it's great. All right, so we'll be prepared to mobilize one, you know, maybe extra <coughs> meetings which none of us really care for, but we need, we know it's a necessity to be able to mobilize for that. There's been some urgent decisions that need to be made with some, maybe some flexibility about meeting at times other than at night, you know, we can do I just think the initial indication from colleagues here is uh, all positive. So I think oh, that yeah. could be delivered tomorrow to our mm -hmm. consultants and uh, to, uh, you know, to move forward in a direction uh, that we've already talked about at the subcommittee level, um, post-haste, so it's good. I have nothing to report. All of my committee meetings are this week, so I'll have a lot to say at our next lengthy meeting. <laughs> but nothing right now. All right, and I just want to ask the board if I might, um, I'm, Will be some of us will be attending the Eagle Scout ceremony next Sunday for Christopher Nearing, who is the youngest, the youngest of De Deborah and Bruce Nearing's children, and it's a it's a real achievement for somebody, it's a leader in our community, to be able to achieve the Eagle Scout status, and it'll be something really special to to be able to attend. 
I was wondering if the board would just permit me to pro bring a citation from the board mm -hmm. acknowledging Absolutely. the effort and yeah, celebrate the effort. Sure. Okay, that'd be great. All right. And I think with that, we might be enough. <laughs> Do we have a motion? Madam Chair, I, I move to adjourn. Second. Right. Motion, and motion by Mr. Sue, second by Mr. O'Leary. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye